All right, well, uh, I'll just talk to you guys briefly about winterized driving. It's coming to that time of year, unfortunately. Uh, you know, we just had a snowstorm just a few weeks ago, so it's coming, uh, unfortunately. I want to live somewhere where it's warm. <laughs> but uh, anyway, there's a lot of things that we uh, try and teach drivers to do before uh, winter comes. There's a lot of pre maintenance that we can do on vehicles uh, to help uh, driving be able to drive safer. The biggest thing that we always tell people is tires. Yeah. Okay. A lot of times people have bald tires, tire with little tread, tires that are worn. If you think about it, the only thing that's keeping your vehicle on the road is about the width of your hand. Okay, that's, there's only four of those on the ground. And if that's all that you have, everything else, your seat belts, your airbags, everything else is secondary to that because that's the main thing you have there is your tires. If you can get studded tires, that's great. If you can get any, uh, you know, winter, the winter tread on the tire, you know, I mean, the more tread that's in there, the better off you're going to be on that. I don't want to use it for the language. So the tread is, is obviously the, the biggest thing there on the tires. The second thing that we want to tell people to do is to make sure that the wiper blades, oh. mm -hmm. the wiper blades are working as well. Uh, not just the blade itself, but the mechanism, the arm. You want to make sure that that arm can go back and forth, and make sure that window is all cleared off. Uh, that goes along with the tires there. When you can't see out the window, you can't see where you're going, and that's a bad day for everybody. Okay? Another vehicle uh, maintenance thing that we tell people is. Make sure that both all of your defrosters are working, whether it be the front defroster, whether it be the rear defroster. A lot of newer cars now have outside mirror defrosters. So wow. if we can keep that ice and snow and everything else off that, it just helps with visibility. And that's the ultimate thing that we're looking for there is visibility, visibility, and, and safe vehicle operation there. Um, let's see, I just thought of another one. Yes. At night, you know, it gets dark, you know, I mean, here in a few months we're going to be getting dark at 5 o'clock and everybody's out driving after that. Uh, make sure your headlights are working, your high beams, your low beams, uh, everything uh, helps with that visibility out there. Uh, when you're out driving, uh, a lot of times younger drivers, uh, inexperienced drivers, excuse my radio, what they, they do is they don't clear off that area. And so you may have your headlights on, but if they're caked in snow, it's not going to do much for you. You're not going to be able to get that visibility that we're looking for. So one thing that I always tell uh, drivers of all ages uh, when you're out there cleaning off your yeah, those wasps. Job. We just wasps like to get in here. We just arrested <laughs> the character. <laughs> Is that a wasp? Oh, sorry, like, wow. what about? That's a big old wasp. Yeah, was. Was. He's no longer. Yes. Yes. Hey, job, job, well done. Did you read his Yeah. <laughs> 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 not read his stripes. That's true. Got a death sentence. Okay. Uh, all right. Yeah, like uh, like I was saying there, uh, what we always tell people when they're out there scraping off their windshields and stuff is to just use that brush. You know, use that brush. Brush off that snow. Get out all that. Uh, slush and ice and everything else off those headlights there as well. Sir? It isn't actually illegal, because I've seen some guys, they just carve out a little, like, peephole in their front windshield, yeah. and they're driving in the winter, like, like sure. they're operating the tank. Is that legal? Yeah, absolutely, that is completely illegal. That is, illegal? That is illegal, yes. What about yes. the back, like, you know, when you're driving and there, the snow is all down, and you cannot see the license plate of the vehicle in front of you? The, uh, as far as that goes, that is not. So we, we have an exemption on there. Uh, we want to make sure all the windows are cleared off. But if you're trying to read a license plate on somebody else, I mean, if you're traveling, you know, 200 miles, if you're going from here to Sheridan or something, that's going to build up. And we don't expect you to pull over every 20 miles to scrape off your license plate. So we always, you know, we generally want that, you know, all the time when it's not snowing uh, to be cleared off so that we can see all that. Um, but yes, as far as the window goes, uh, you know, uh, make sure you have scrapers. 
uh, scrapers in the vehicle uh, to make sure that that, because that is one thing that drives me crazy is you see, like you said, a little tank mm -hmm. thing and they're driving around and I'm like, how can you see anything? Mm -hmm. Give them a ticket. A little hole, yep, and, and that's, uh, you know, we'll stop them and, and actually make them scrape it off while we're writing that ticket. So we get, we get double. <laughs> um, okay, so let's see. We talked. The biggest one, obviously, was the tires, uh, the wiper blades, the froster. Uh, a lot of this is, is just uh, is, is just common maintenance on vehicles that we try and make sure that everybody's aware of stuff that can be prevented. Because that's ultimately what we're looking for is to prevent crashes, make sure that we get to our destination safely. How about antifreeze? Antifreeze? Yep. Yeah. Hopefully everybody has antifreeze in their vehicles. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's, uh, you know, that's, that's uh, another good point. Make sure that all your, your fluids are topped off. Mm -hmm. Have a full tank of gas or yep. over half. Yep, yep. Yep, uh, one thing I always tell everybody is if you're below half, you're, 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 looking, for, you're looking for trouble. Yep. So one is cheaper, well, I don't know, but it's a little easier to spend $30 at the pump instead of $60 at the pump. Mm -hmm. But uh, you know, the more important thing is if you're out traveling, uh, you know, and you're going on a long distance trip, you want to make sure that you have enough gas because we all know living here for a while it takes a while to get places here. So a lot of people that come from out of state think there's a town every five miles and they can get gas. Well, <laughs> little, <laughs> little do they know. Um, yes. Any questions on on equipment before I start into the vehicle? What about things that a person should carry, like a cat litter, a blanket, a sure, candle, sure. a coffee can? Great, great, uh, great question there. Uh, what we always, uh, you know, we, we try and tell people to always have a winter survival kit mm -hmm. in the vehicle. And, and A lot of people, you know, there's there's multiple ways to build a winter survival kit. Uh, it's personal preference, but one thing we always want to make sure that they have is food, first aid, kit. first aid kits, kitty litter, kitty litter. Yep, I've heard of that. To get out of here. Mm -hmm. We always want to make sure they have uh, some type of shelter, whether that be blankets. Mm -hmm. Uh, a lot of times they have those space blankets. I'm not sure if you guys yeah. wear those, but yeah, they're big, shiny. Yeah. Yep. yep. Space blankets, anything that will Candle. keep them warm. Candles, yep. Matches. Yep. You know, there's uh, Matches. a blanket. Well, space blanket is the same. Yep, yep, like to keep it warm. Uh, matches, candles, um, anything that we can even put on your vehicle to uh, signal that, uh, that you're broken down, that you need help, whether that be a real red flag, you can hang on your antenna, something like that. Because unfortunately, Wyoming's getting better, uh, but there's still a lot of places that don't have cell phone service. Right. So there's, there's still some dead areas out there where cell phones don't work. And if somebody's driving by in a plow and they see a little red flag on an antenna, you know, that's usually the universal sign that we need to stop and help, help out the people there. So, uh, you know, there's all sorts of other stuff that you can put in a, in a winter survival kit. You know, I mean, you can throw a shovel in there, uh, but the biggest ones that, you know, obviously we're looking for there is food, some type of uh, fluid, uh, whether it be water, Gatorade, something like that. Uh, first aid kit and then blankets there. Um, and, and, you know, I, I wish a lot of times people would just get rid of that winter and just have that as a survival kit because well, you can break down. Yeah, yeah, you can break down in July just as easy as you can in February. So, and and you know, it's nice just to have that comfort, that self assurance that that stuff's going to be in your vehicle with you. Okay. Anything else on our slides? <laughs> Now, the, the biggest, uh, we talked about vehicles and uh, their maintenance and stuff like that, but, you know, all that stuff is great, but, you know, have to, you'll have to know how to operate your vehicle. Okay. 
operation of motor vehicle. Uh, whenever there's uh, hazardous road conditions, whenever there's snow, all that stuff. A have you all heard of the three second rule? You know, what, that, uh, what that is, it, on a perfectly dry road, what we want is we want three seconds, three second following distance between vehicle one Vehicle two. That's uh, vehicle we're going this way. What we want there is we want a minimum of three seconds. And what that does is that gives you enough time if vehicle two sees Bambi jump out in front of them, slam on their brakes, that gives you enough time to recognize, move your foot over, recognize, understand, and act. So what we're looking for there is okay, vehicle two. Signs on his brakes. If we had that far enough uh, following distance there, we're going to be able to stop on it or we'll be able to either maneuver around or hit our brakes in time to make sure that we come to a stop and avoid that rear end collision there. Now, and that's on perfectly dry roads. That's roads in August. That's roads, you know, that's when everything's nice and flowers and everything. But say we throw snow, ice, nighttime. Poor visibility. Visibility. Anything that, uh, that affects that, what we want to do is we want to make sure that we add a second. So if it's snow and if the poor visibility is out, we want a five second. If the roads are icy, you know, obviously we want a much more increased falling distance. Just because, you know, we all know what it's like to drive on ice vehicle is very difficult to stop that. So the farther following distance we can have, the better off we're going to be. Obviously, I know driving through town, it's hard. I know, it drives me crazy. The concrete gauntlet of doom is what we call it, <laughs> five miles second through town. And uh, just because, you know, the, the road surface there is, it freezes really easy and whew, it's like bumper cars. I mean, so uh, we want to make sure that if we can, at all possibilities, all opportunities, make sure that that falling distance is, is, is good on there. Okay. That's the biggest one on there. Um, let's see. Okay. In the book manual, the manual for uh, driving, don't they say something about you ought to be able to see the back to the person's license, back license plate in front of you? Correct. What uh, what I always tell people. I always leave almost a car lane. The people get right on the back of my car almost. You know, and it scares me. Yes, ma'am. What uh, what what she's talking about there is, say you're stopped at a stoplight, mm -hmm. and the vehicle in front of you is stopped in front of you. What I always tell people to do is, you should be able to see the hood of your car and then see the bottom of their tires. Okay. So that will give you enough room if they stall out or something happens that you can maneuver around safely. Why don't you tell that to the guy behind you? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Especially if they're right on that, you. I know, I know. I, that, that's a good it's, that's rule a, of thumb. Yeah, yeah, it's a great rule okay, of thumb. You yep. see the tire. Yep. So, yeah, here's a tire. Here's a tire. I know they're supposed to be circles. I went to UW. So you're stopped there. What you want to do is you should be able to see the hood of your vehicle here, and then, like I said, you should be able to see the bottom of those tires, and that will give you ample opportunity. If they break down, if they if something happens to this vehicle here, you can get, you can maneuver around. You don't have to wait for everybody else to get around and all that stuff. So that's uh, that's that's a good general rule of thumb to think about there. Because if you can see the hood of your vehicle, you can turn, you can crank your wheel as far over to the left or as far over to the right as possible. Okay. Uh, all right. So we talked about following distance. The next biggest thing that we always want to tell people when uh, when they're, when winter time is coming around is to be cognizant of your speed. Okay. A lot of times, I would say, ninety-eight percent of the crashes we go to can't be prevented if people just slow down, <laughs> slow the bleed down. Because speed is so such a huge, 
huge uh, influence on crashes there. You know, if you're doing 80 miles an hour, which I'll talk about here in a few minutes yeah. with our awesome new 80 mile an hour speed limit zone. doing 80 miles an hour you're doing 119 feet per second wow okay. in relation what that what that is guys is that is a football field in two and a half seconds oh my gosh okay that's the amount of ground good lord that, and you know what and i hate to say it but 80 a lot of people aren't doing 80 now they're doing 85 yeah they're but doing what I have a big question because I cannot get to 80. I, I just, you know, when they were doing 55, I was okay. At 60, I'm fine. But I like to control the car. But you go to the, I go to the and it's like the car is controlling me, and I don't like the way it feels. You know, there's no minimum speed limit in Wyoming. So if you want to do 60 on the interstate, feel free to do 60. And you won't stop? And I won't stop. You might. I might, because I remember you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but no, it, no, uh, no, no, 60. no, seriously, because I, I, you know, 60 I'm comfortable, mm -hmm. but when I get, when it gets going too fast, it's like the car is in control, and I don't like that feeling, you know. Wait, it, which, yeah, because you want to be in control. Right. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, it's, so there, you know, a lot of other states, Colorado, um, Nevada, Nebraska, they all have minimum speed limits. We don't in Wyoming. So that's how you can have a farmer with a mobile machinery going five miles an hour down the highway. So there is no minimum speed limit. Mm -hmm. the, the maximum, we have a maximum speed limit, which is the 80 mile an hour on the interstates yeah. in approved areas. Fast. And I never voted for that. 80 miles per hour on the yeah. interstate yeah. in approved areas. There are certain areas of the state that's still 75. Um, I know by Sundance there's a section of it, yep. certain sections down on I-80, even around Douglas there is 75. This is on an interstate. Your two lane highways are still going to be 65. Good. You know, that, uh, that's as you're heading out to Alcova, that's, you know, as you're heading out to, to Hell's Half Acre, that's all still going to be 65. So uh, any two lane, and that's just because there's, there's only about six feet of distance between vehicles going this way and vehicles going this way. If you think about it, that's as tall as I am, six feet. So that's the only difference between a vehicle doing 65 and a vehicle doing 65 as they pass. It's not very much room. Mm -mm. Okay. So uh, that's, that's why that's hopefully we'll stay at 65. 80, uh, like I said, you're covering a lot of ground and not a lot of time. So you throw, start throwing road conditions on there such as ice and snow and, and wind and visibility. Um, you know, unfortunately, Wyoming doesn't have a variable speed limit around Casper. They do down on I-80. But uh, if the roads are icy and everything, our speed limit is still 80 miles an hour. If I see you doing 80 miles an hour and the roads are icy, there's nothing I can do about it. Oh, shit. Okay? I can do something if you crash. Speed too fast. Yeah, but you probably will. Speed too fast. Yeah, you probably will. But if you are, are some Yahoo out of New York and you're doing 80 miles an hour and the roads are icy and everybody else is doing 50, 40 miles an hour that you like know how to drive, there's nothing I can do about it. May I? May I ask why? They permitted the 80 miles per? That was a legislative thing that they approved uh, this last uh, session. Yeah. So that was uh, all of our elected representatives, they passed a bill uh, allowing the speed limit to be raised to 80 miles an they hour. They didn't give you a reason, they just said this is what we want. So the, the rationale that we heard was everybody does 80 now anyway. So they so approved the, the bill, which now, you know, and yeah, the, I. 80 now, everybody's doing 85. You know, and, you, and whenever you increase that speed, I mean, you're just increasing that. Yeah. I mean, you're increasing that exponentially. If you're doing 90 miles an hour, I don't even know what that would be. I mean, Have you seen any change in the number of accidents or in the seriousness of the I accidents? Don't severity, yeah. yeah. Yeah, we've seen, we can see a lot more with the Highway Patrol. Our severity of accidents have gone up. It, it's going to um, make your job tougher. You know, uh, when we're having a record year of fatals mm -hmm. in, in the sure. state, and you know, I don't know if the correlation is there between that on the um, the, on the fatal crashes and the higher speed limit, or, or what. But every time, I mean, you guys can see how much ground you're covering at just at 80. So if you're throwing in extra speed limit, I mean, you're only 20 miles an hour away from 100. 
Mm -hmm. yeah, that's 20 mile an hour. That's a school of its uh, school zone. Mm -hmm. So it's not very much. I mean, it doesn't take very much more than you're in triple digits. So you know, I tell people, a lot of people, you know, they're doing 90, and I said, well, I'm only doing 10 over the speed limit. And I said, well, yeah, but you're also 10 away from 100. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and, it, and there's a little light bulb that clicks on inside of them. That's a very, very dangerous speed. So we, uh, you know, we. You know, I still see a lot of 75s, you know, people that aren't going to change, you know, and like I said, there's no minimum speed limit. So you can be doing, you can be doing 60 mile an hour on the interstate and we okay. won't, we'll wave to you. So uh, just make sure, uh, you know, when, uh, when the roads turn icy and the roads slush up and, and everything like that, we're adjusting our speed accordingly. Um, Okay, so we're, we're doing uh, we're, we're we're doing good. We're doing 30 miles an hour. The roads are icy. They're horrible roads, like we will have here in a few months, and I'm gonna be crying. Uh, the roads have iced over, and you lose control. What do you do? Okay, you're you're spinning out. How do you how do you uh, how do you correct that? Take your foot off the accelerator. Okay, that's that's step one. What do you do after that? Pray. <laughs> Don't crash. Okay. I, I, don't come see I have no idea. Okay. What we always tell people is we, we always tell them to turn into it. Okay, it's opposite of what you think you want to do. If you're turning left, you turn right. Okay, so it's, it's so kind like backing of, up? Yeah, yeah, it's, it's just like backing up. So you turn into your spin, and that's opposite of what you want to do. So if you're spinning off to the right, you don't want to turn to the right because you're just going to amplify that. What you want to do is you want to turn your wheel to the left, steer opposite of the slide. I, I don't follow that. I thought you said spin into the turn. You're saying spin out of the turn. Correct. You want to spin out of the turn. If you spin your wheel, if you're if you're if you spin it, you go around the circle. Yeah, it's 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 kind of hard to explain. But if you're going like this way, you hit a patch of ice, and your vehicle spin starts spinning that way. Okay. If you turn your wheel then you blow that way, completely. you're just adding to it. Are you are you tracking? Oh, okay. So, so uh, in other words, I'm going to like go off the road. Correct. So yeah. I don't turn my wheels off the road. You're going correct. I fight it. It's like backing wanna, up. It's just like backing up. You you do opposite of what you do. So if when you're backing up, you turn your wheel right and you go left. Yeah, that's if you've got a trailer behind you because. That my husband has to teach me. Yeah, yeah, it's 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 hard to teach young drivers uh, that you do opposite because you want to turn into it. Yeah, that's that's the, your first reaction is to turn into it. But if you think about it, if you're going to the right, turning wheel to the right, you know you add one plus one, you're going to equal two, so you're you're adding to it. So if you're going to the right, so go the opposite. Go the opposite. You know, I mean, if you have one, you take away one. You're gonna equal zero. So, and, and sometimes if it's if your speeds are too fast, if the roads are super icy, you know, even as much steering input as you can put into it, you're still gonna slide off. So, this is why we want to make sure. Don't hit the brakes. Don't hit the brakes. Yep. Ease off the gas. Um, a, a lot of times, <coughs> speaking of this, you're driving along, the roads are perfectly dry, and you hit a bridge deck. Okay, that's the first thing that ices up. That uh, storm we had a couple weeks ago, the bridge decks were the first to go. And because there's no there's no heat from the from the ground to help warm the road up. It's just that all that open air, that space in between. Mm -hmm. So there's nothing there. You know, a lot of times the road guys, they have the 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 road highway here, they have the ground underneath it to help insulate it. And you're out there on the bridge deck, it's bridge air. So there's nothing there. So those, those are the first to ice up. Um, you know, when you're going across there, I always tell people, you know, if the roads are bad, to just go across the, the bridge deck. Don't push the gas pedal, just let your car go across. Because if you turn that, if you push the gas pedal, you're gonna increase that torque on those tires, and you're gonna, you know, it's, it's gonna wanna, wanna go. And if you have that high torque on those tires, you're going across that, and then that's gonna be, you're gonna be spinning, and, so, um, bridge decks are the first to go uh, whenever it storms. 
whenever, whenever it is. And, you know, we, we have this new, uh, uh, we just had a snow plan meeting for this year, uh, just a few days ago, and they had this new plow out that's supposed to help some of that de ice, supposed to, it's called the tow plow. And it's supposed to be able to uh, plow both lanes at once. So it's supposed to, it's supposed to be really, it's supposed to be really neat. We'll see, hopefully it works as well as it, as well as it says. But, Hopefully that will help alleviate some of that with the de icing. I suppose we ought to mention uh, cruise control. Yeah. I, don't, I can't use that because I can never have figured it out. Yeah, yep, yep. Cruise control uh, is one of the worst things you can do when you're out driving on the ice roads. Just because of that torque thing that I was talking about, cruise control wants to keep you at a certain speed. Okay, if you're out, you're going up a hill, you know, and, and you have that cruise control on because the roads are perfectly dry, you know, you're going and life is life is great. You come across the bridge deck and that cruise control, uh, for those of you that have used it, you know, you'll hear that your RPMs go, you know, because it's trying to keep you at a certain speed. So while you're going up that, if you have your cruise control on, you come over that, that bridge or that road, that patch of ice, that torque on those wheels is going to want to keep driving. you at that speed. Mm. And it's just going to, that's... That's a recipe for disaster yeah. there. So, sir. Uh, before you got here, we were talking a little bit about, you know, some of the, the signs on the highway that have been put up in the recent years. And there's signs about cruise control and how many miles an hour the wind's blowing and, and uh, That's uh, icy bridges and all that. And if mm -hmm. people get used to them, they really are a lot. They're helpful. They, they are great. tremendously helpful. Yeah, we, uh, yeah. Yeah, I think you bring up that point. We just had a couple of new signs put in. Uh, each one of those signs are 1.5 million dollars. So. Oh mercy! Oh, so, wow. <laughs> but they're they're really they're really great. What the you know we we just uh, I got to use one a couple of weeks ago. Uh, there was a big crash down south of town, and uh, for those of you that aren't aware, there are these giant overhead mm -hmm. signs. You know, and they'll say crash ahead. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Or or turn off cruise control. That's, or, that's down in Colorado, that one there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Everywhere in Colorado down there. Yeah. Uh, a lot of times we'll air amber alerts on those. Yeah, just, I've seen that. Yep, yep. We'll, uh, that, that's a great way because you know there's they have these big lights mm -hmm. that flash up here, so it gets the driver's attention. And, uh, but the if message, you're going 80 miles an hour, you can't read it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Boom! Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they, uh, you know, they, but generally most of the time they get the message across. So the incident I had just a few weeks ago was we had a big crash and the, and the complete left lane was blocked. So I uh, had them put uh, crash ahead, left lane blocked, and every driver was in that right hand lane. No, there was no congestion, there was no anything like that. So it's, it, I'll be excited to see uh, how they work in the winter. We have one up by Ormsby. Uh, which is nine miles north of town, and then there's one that's down by Hat Six, which is by that new Sonic. So that's only a couple miles south of town. So we'll get people going into town and get people from both both directions, or north and south. Um, there's also some variable signs through town, uh, through the Concrete Gauntlet of Doom. Uh, unfortunately, they aren't as big as those. They're the, just the they're just the little ones that are alongside the road. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, they they just say. You know, crash ahead. Yeah. And they have a little light, a little light up here. So they, you know, they, they aren't obviously as big as these, but the state can't go by those all the time. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. What determines closing on twenty-five? Great question. We have no control over that. The highway patrol has no control over that. I wish we did because we would close it more than it is. Uh, what we do in a situation like that, uh, we go out and uh, there's, we get called, you know, there's crashes and everything, and we're out responding, and, and what we do is we call the maintenance foreman. There's a part of YDOT, which is the Wyoming Department of Transportation. There's a part of them that are foremen, and they go out there and they assess the roads, they assess the snowfall, you know, the future cast on how the weather is looking, and uh, then they make that decision to shut down the roads or not. Depending on how the plow drivers are doing, if they can keep the roads clear, um, so once they determine to uh, close the road, then uh, the gates close down, which I'm sure you all have seen. And the gates close down, the plows and us will go through there and try and make sure that everybody's out of there until we can open up the roads. Whether that be through you know, escorting people out, uh, giving rides if we can, set their vehicles off the road, um, we're going to get you out of there. 
I have a problem with one of those large signs. Well, maybe it's not a large sign. Uh, towards Midwest. Why do they let us go clear that far from Casper to say road closed? Why don't they have it closer to Casper? Sure. Because I sure wouldn't want to pull off and go that small little road to Midwest, especially yeah, a I traveler agree. not knowing what's out there. I mean. Yeah, and it's uh, it's all of what. 15 miles from the interstate to Midwest uh -huh. on mm -hmm. that two-lane highway there. You know, I, I don't really have a great answer for you. Um, the only thing I can think of is if, if there's a big uh, snowstorm in Midwest and it hasn't made it to Casper yet, obviously we're not going to close Casper down yet. We're not trying to get as many people as we can down to Casper before that storm hits. Um, Put it in KC. <laughs> yeah, because <laughs> yeah, uh, I'm going all the way to Cheyenne and then they'll close the road. Yeah. Uh, sometimes they're working on the road that's closed and the other one's still open. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And they're just keeping you out of their hair until they get the road open. Yeah, Yeah, because, uh, you know, that's, that's a great point. A lot of times what we'll do is we'll close down the road and the plows will go northbound in the northbound lane, but then they'll also turn around and go northbound in the southbound lane. So they're going the wrong direction. They don't want to have cars coming at them. They're trying to get that road cleared off. As much sand and as much salt and everything else as possible. A great reference. that you can uh, get on before you begin a trip is wildroad.info. And that has webcams, uh, that's real-time footage of how the road looks, that gives road conditions. Uh, if it's ice, if it's, uh, if it's snowing, it gives you multi or uh, more than one condition being reported. That is, a, that, and that's up to date. That's, that's a, as close as we can get to real-time uh, real information, so. If you want to see what it looks like in uh, Kemmer, you log on there, you can pull up a, a webcam. If you want to see what it looks like in Jackson, and you're sitting here in Casper, you can look it up and see what it looks like up there. So uh, that's, uh, that's something that's pretty good. Uh, Wildroad.info um, is, is a great resource that, uh, that's available for everybody that has access to a computer. So best speed in, uh, in weather is about 50, 60 miles an hour. You know, it's it's case by case basis. You know, I I I will drive my cop cars 20 miles an hour sometimes just because it's so bad. Mm -hmm. You know, I can't say you know if it's icy, a good speed is 40. Yeah. You know, it, it depends on a lot of your experience. Yeah. And if we have a 16 year old that's never driven on ice, yeah. I don't want him doing 40. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't want I don't want him out there driving. You know, but if you have a, a driver that's been driving for 40 years, you know, they can probably handle that a little bit better. Uh, they, they know how to react to vehicles, they know how road conditions, what they look like, what, you know, black ice is hard to, to see, but you can generally have an idea. Mm -hmm. You know, if you're driving and you're not seeing any water spray come up from tires, you know, from you look across mm -hmm. there and you see a semi and a lot of water spray coming up, you know the roads aren't frozen. If you're driving and you don't see anything, you know, there, there's nothing coming off the road. So, you know, there's, they're pretty icy. Mm -hmm. So, just, you know, I, and that just comes with experience. Just little things that we pick up as we're so, do you guys have any questions for me? I, I'd be more than happy to answer. Yes, sir. Well, so I'll, I'll just say my opinion. The jerk behind me is going down East Second Street, <laughs> three feet away from me. He wants me to hurry up, hurry up, hurry up. What do I do? Slow down. Just slow, slow down. down. <laughs> That's what I always do. Slow, slow, down. Down. slow down and wave at them as they do. Okay. Well, you can't wave at them and you snow when you should be going slow yep, yep. so what do you do I mean, you what's know, the best uh, way to handle it you know uh, my wife asks me this question everywhere you know and, and i say ah, they're casper drivers but uh what i always tell people to do when you're in an experience like or in a situation like that is you know uh, pull over let them buy Mm -hmm. yeah, I know. Cool. I know. It's you know. It stinks. You don't want to be that guy that's a, that's a pushover and everything. Yeah. Uh, if they crash into the back of you, I want to write that ticket every day to them because mm -hmm. they're following too closely. Okay. Uh, you know, and, and that's a that's a preventable crash on their end. They don't have to be following you so closely. You know, I'm gonna write that ticket every day. But it doesn't hurt to pull over to the left lane or to the right lane. Let them zip around. Let them crash. Mm -hmm. Let them mess up their vehicles. You know. Like, and, you know, uh, another thing you can do is if they're right up on you like that, and we talked a little earlier about following distance, maybe increase it a couple more seconds. That way they have more time to react if you're slowing down. 
So if you're slowing, if you hit your brakes, obviously they don't have the three seconds. They're going to hit the back of you, and then you're going to probably end up hitting the back of the car in front of you. Just because what they'll do is, you know, you'll have vehicle one hit vehicle two, mm -hmm. and that just that force will push you into the back of vehicle three. So uh, whenever we have three car crashes, that's generally that's generally what happens there. It's, it's butt head number one hits this guy who hits this guy. Can you tell me why is it? During the winter, I'm trying to remember which way it goes. If it's high beams or low beams, one of them, all of a sudden everything gets blurry and the other one is better. Low beams. Yeah, you, you, would, you would think if you're out driving, that's a great question, you think when you're out driving, uh, generally, you know, in, in, a, in a July night, if you have your highs on, you can see more. Okay? Yeah. If you turn your highs on when it's snowing, what that does is they, they shoot up. Mm -hmm. So when you're getting all that snow, all that uh, that, that uh, stuff that uh, you know blowing into you, keep your keep your. Uh, oh, oh, so that's beams. just going. Uh, yep. Uh, high beams aren't just going further. I mean, they're going higher. Correct. Yeah, yeah. It's oh, it's, okay. it's kind of like yeah. a cone. So so your lights are kind of like a cone. So mm -hmm. if you turn on your highs, you're going to get a lot more. Oh, a lot more of the snow and stuff hitting you there. Yeah. Um, sometimes it's so bad. When I'm out there driving, I'll just turn on my fog lights. Mm -hmm. You know, I'll have my headlights on so that people can see me. But what I do is I just drive, and I have on the front of my push car, the push bumper there, I have these two little fog lights. Mm -hmm. And that's, you know, sometimes I see better out of that than I do. Oh, yeah. Even with my low beams on, just my regular headlights, I'll still be able to get more from my fog lights that are, that are closer to the ground. So, but do you have to have your headlights on though? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yes, yeah. yes, 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 yes. <laughs> yes. I'm just saying I can see the lines better mm -hmm. with these. So you turn on your fog lights and your headlights. Yep, yep, yep. So I'll turn on my fog lights, and that's just that's just the patrol car. That's just the, that's just the cop car thing. Although some cars do have fog lights. You'll see the headlights up there, and then down in the each corner you'll see the yeah, little, yeah, little, 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 yeah, little, little fog lights there. Yep. So uh, that you know that's sometimes you will obviously always want to have your headlights on. So that's that's. That just goes without right. saying, but the fog lights sometimes will help you out see, uh, see the lights Thank a little bit better. Yeah, this is too interesting. Can you tell me what the purpose of these bright blue lights and the the different yeah, color lights. lights you see on these cars? Green lights, People pink with lights. eye problems yeah. have a terrible time with those. Yeah, they, uh, you know, I, I'm assuming you're talking about the younger generation that has their... Well, I don't know what they're on, but I know they're... they're Those are the halicone lights, lights, aren't they? Yeah, yeah. They're, 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 the, they're the halogen lights, yeah, yeah. and uh, their underbodies, they, what they do is they'll put them up underneath the bottoms of their vehicles and they'll, they'll match sometimes with their music. Mm -hmm. The lights will flash yeah. with the base of their, their vehicles and stuff. Mm -hmm. That's that, that is illegal. I mean, a lot of cars, a lot of cars come with them. Yep. Well, they, they, they yeah, can't be blue. Yeah. They can't be red. Those are those are reserved for us. Wow. So the green ones, the green ones out there a lot. That that is legal. The only thing is they can't have light to the rear. So if you're following behind them, they can have all the underglow they want as long as it's not red or blue. Uh, but if there's anything coming to the back, because that that will affect your vision. These I are the regular headlights. You see them all over. Oh, you're talking like the blue, uh, yeah. the blue LED yeah. headlights. Okay. Yeah, you know, uh, some people think that that, uh, that increases visibility. Um, I'm, I'm with you. I'm not a big fan. They are super bright. Yes. Okay. Yeah, like I said, too and bright. Too with bright. eye problems, which I'm one of. Yep. Yep. And uh, yeah, you know, and uh, and it's illegal to pass somebody with your headlights on, your uh, high beams on, mm -hmm. you know, because you're going to blind somebody. But I pull over these people with the blue uh, halogen headlights, and they're just on normal. So. But they are legal. They are legal. What about the tinting on, on these windows that is so black that you can't see whether it's a tall person, short person, person, person? It's, uh, I mean, to me, it'd be scary if I was a cop. It is. It is. Yeah. And uh, what we always do and for an officer safety thing on that is we tell them to turn on their door lights. And that lights up the whole vehicle. And then the light from the... But what if it's so dark, the it, tint, yep. that you can't see them? And That's we have scary to me. We, yep, we have tint meters, and it is illegal to have it below 20. I will have to double check. Because I've seen, because I've seen cars that, that it's so black. Yep. That, I mean, it's in the daytime, and you turn around and look, and all you see is a black window, or you go. It looks like they took a paintbrush and just painted the black. Yeah. yeah. And, and the other day, I went by this blue car. I was going down 12th Street, and there is this blue piece of crap car, and they blacked out the tail lights. 
and that woman was scary. I mean, she was driving here, she was driving there, and I just held back, and I thought, keep on going, girlfriend, because. Yep, yep, yep. There's, uh, there's a statute yep. saying that uh, the, that the windows can't be tinted below a certain level. Yeah, but I, I, I don't want to say it's like 20 something. Yeah, but she had the windows all black, black, and then the tail lights thank you, were black. Yeah. You know, and you couldn't tell whether she was stopping, and she was just doing, driving like crazy. Yep, and when, whenever you see that, if you think they're impaired or you think there's something else going on there, feel free to call the, the local police, uh, call us, you know, if it's out on the highway, anything like that. We want to remove impaired drivers from the road. That's what we want to do because we see the, the tragedy. We see all the tragedy and everything that goes along with that. So if you call, give a direction of travel, give a license plate if you can, give in as much uh, detail as you can. A lot of times we'll get, there's a speeding white truck. No, no, you there's, couldn't. There's 50 you speeding you couldn't pass her because she was, you know, at, at, <laughs> but like I said, those tail lights were black. Yeah, and, and that's all great detail, you know. Yeah. Super dark tail lights, uh, blue 1980 Honda Civic, something. I just know colors. Like, I don't know years. Well, yeah, I mean, it's yeah. a, it's an old it's an old yeah. beer, an old beer car. Yeah. Uh, you know, as much detail as possible. We love that. Is there a, is there a special number like? You, I'm thinking like, wasn't it star 55 or something you could call to get the highway patrol or? You know, we, uh, I think that a lot of other states have that. Uh, I know Colorado has uh, report uh, aggressive driver hotlines. Um, ours is, is just, you know, it's called normal police. Well, what if, what if you do that? It goes to court, they find out who reported them. Then they come get, <laughs> come after me with a gun or something. You, know? you can remain anonymous. You can remain anonymous. You will remain yeah, there, there's two different ways you can go about that. You can remain anonymous, and they'll never know. Now, if you want to sign a complaint, you know, if, if, because I have to have a reason to stop them. I can't just go off of your word. So I, if, they, if they're driving perfectly fine, I can't stop them. That's a common misconception. I can't stop just because you called it in. So if I see them speeding, if I see them driving all over the road, then I can stop them. But if they're driving perfectly fine, they're, you know, they're five miles an hour below the speed limit, they haven't hit the line once, I can't. So if you are willing to sign a complaint, what that's called, uh, I will pull them over, and then if they are impaired, then you'll have to sign an affidavit saying what you saw, and then you'll end up going to court. So there's two different ways to handle that. So a lot of times, with the, like you said, most of, the, most of the time, they just want to remain anonymous. So you'll call us, tell us the report, which to remain anonymous, and then, I, then it's on me to try and find a reason to stop them. So what, for example, I'm, I'm going down East Second Street, and I see a guy in front of me, and he's weaving mm -hmm. right lane. And I know this guy. Either, well, either he's just playing some jazzy music, or he's drunk or something. Mm -hmm. I can call that in. Please do. Suspicion, whatever. Yep. And the the officer answers, won't demand my name. Nope. Nope. Uh, right. What what you're gonna do? Let's call that in as a radio report. I'm not sure some people mm -hmm. put that report every drunk driver right. immediately. So you use, you call up 911 and say there's a I want to report a ready report, and they'll, the dispatchers will go and they'll ask you all these questions and everything, and then towards the end they'll ask if you wish to remain anonymous, and that's when you say yes or they'll ask if you wish to sign a complaint, and you'll say yes I would like to sign a complaint. Uh -huh. So then then dispatch tells us you know because we're out driving fast we don't have really have time to get all these details that's yeah. what they're doing, uh, so they'll say uh, the RP the reporting person is willing to sign a complaint. And that's all That's all we know. So, okay. and, then, and then we stop them. Uh, you'll give them your phone number, your, your name. But none of that's public information. I mean, the bad guy's not gonna be able to pull up and get your address and your phone number. But uh, that helps us out. So I pull them over and I say, all right, sir, I need your, you know, I'll, I'll need a phone number and get a statement from you. <coughs> so a lot of times, like I said, I would say probably 80% of the time they're anonymous. So I can call 911? Yep. That, that, okay. Yep. The, the other thing I've seen a couple of times, and I just go, a guy's driving at night and there's no headlights. Yeah. Like he pulls out of a gas station. Mm -hmm. So I'm guessing he probably just forgot to turn on his headlight. But maybe not. Maybe he's drunk or impaired. There, there's, well, what should I do? There's a, there's a huge difference. What I would do, what I would tell people to do, uh, is if you're driving on the interstate and you see that, that's a big issue. If you're driving down 2nd Street and you see the guy without his headlights on, like I said, maybe he's just a knucklehead and forgot to turn on those headlights. Yeah. So if you're seeing him going and if you're seeing him all over the road, if you're seeing him drive up on the curb, just, you know, I mean, there, there's more than that. To this kind of all right. A lot of times these uh, automatic headlights, you know, they don't turn on and, and people forget that they have manual headlights and they actually have to turn on the headlights. So. 
There's a lot of illuminate light as you drive down the street. So. Okay. Any other questions, guys? Hope that was good for an impromptu. Yeah. <laughs> it's great. Thank you. Thank you for coming. Thank you. you bet, guys. You bet. You bet. What's your name? Adam Bruning. Adam what? Bruning? I wish it was Smith or something. All right. <laughs> <laughs> have any further questions I mean if you're out there uh, and you see something and you have a question about it or if you have uh, anything you might want to bring up uh, my email address is right there at I'm not bringing a while uh, you know I'm usually pretty good at uh, responding to those, so. I, I do have one follow-up question yeah of course just to be very honest with you so I'm, I'm basically I am a safe driver every now and then I look and go you know it's like I went 15 miles over I wouldn't even realize okay, 